Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Winning in Life Without Losing Your Mind podcast. Today is going to look a little bit different. For the last 20 episodes, I've been having guests on, and we've been asking them five questions centered around one of the five topics that I've been exploring since I launched earlier this year. Well, for the next phase of the podcast, or over the next several months, I wanted to just talk to you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I wanted to bring to you some of the things that have been on my mind, some of the things that I've learned uh, along the way. And one of the things I wanted to start with today was the Enneagram. So let's get started. All right, I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. No matter where you're watching or listening from, I would love for you to like, subscribe, ring the bell if it's on YouTube, rate, review if it's an audio podcast. All of that really helps uh, grow the content that you're taking in right now. So like I said, I want to start uh, this new season of the podcast talking about the Enneagram. So many times I, I get the question from people, why, why the Enneagram? Why is the Enneagram uh, different or how is the Enneagram different than any other uh, personality profile test. There's profile tests like uh, Myers-Briggs, which is amazing, DISC profile, uh, even the new working genius. They're all great personality profile tests to help you discover how to best produce your work and to interact with the world around us. And, and let me just say this first, all personality profile tests, including the Enneagram, they're just tools. Okay, these are tools. This is not something that defines who you are as a person, I believe as a Christian that we find our identity in Christ. And that is where my foundation is. It's not in the Enneagram. It's not in any other tool. It's not in the moleskin that I use. It's not in the iPhone that I use every day. It's not in the internet. All of those things are just tools and the Enneagram is a tool as well. But what I love specifically about the Enneagram is that it gets to the, it gets to the, uh, the core of who you are. It gets to the core of the individual and it strips away all of the what can you do for me or what can you do for my company type of questions. Instead, uh, it gets it gets into the deep of like, hey, what gets you out of bed in the morning? What is your core motivation? Who are you? Uh, if I strip everything else away, everything that you do, if I strip all that away, who are you? And that's what I love about the Enneagram. And I love specifically about the Enneagram is, is using it in the light of the gospel and seeing who Christ has made us, seeing who God the Father has made us in his image and how uniquely and wonderfully and fearfully each one of us are made. So if we strip away all that what you can do for me, we get to the what gets you out of the bed in the morning, we can recognize a unique perspective that we bring to all of our relationships, including this is huge, especially when we talk about mental health, including the relationship to yourself. You talk to yourself more than anyone else. No one else talks to you as much as you talk to yourself, and you don't talk to other people as much as you talk to yourself. And so the relationship with ourself isn't just some uh, new wavy, hey, you just got to love yourself. It's not about that. It's about understanding your tendencies so that you can experience God's grace even more abundantly as you walk in this life. It's all about winning in life without losing our mind. So it's not about uh, winning or losing uh, like, a, like a lot of other profile tests. It really, Enneagram helps us distinguish a healthy version of who we are made to be versus an unhealthy version of who we're made to be. And we begin to see those triggers and warning signs with things like wings and lines and all the things that you can dive into and things that we'll talk about more on this podcast. But uh, I recently heard this comedian, his name is Zoltan, uh, and he commented about millennials being self-aware. And he was right. He said, you know, I think we might be too self-aware. I think we might be too into who we are. And that is a fine line that we must walk. We must not become self-absorbed, but we must become self-aware. If we're going to walk and win in life without losing our mind, we must become more self-aware. And that's what I love 
about the Enneagram, gets us back to the core of who we really are. Listen, as a leader, I know it's beneficial to know where those that we're leading are coming from uh, and as well. Uh, there's a, a text, a call, an email, a Slack, et cetera, just coming from a place. Is that coming from a place of health or is that coming from a place of stress when you're interacting with those that you work with, or whether it's those that are above you or those that are below you, or maybe you're an independent entrepreneur and you're on your own, but you're working with clients who are really difficult and they may or may not be getting you everything that they need for you to do what they're asking you to do, right? But it's important for you to know and understand yourself of how you receive that tension and also how you give out that tension and know if it's a healthy or unhealthy balance. And so you can realign back to who God has made you to be. And so uh, I would love for you as we continue this conversation about the Enneagram to take an Enneagram test. I use the one on your Enneagram coach.com. I'll put a link in the show notes, whether you're watching or listening to this for you to check that out. But here, here's, here's something that uh, I want to give out a warning, uh, a couple of warnings before I send you to an Enneagram uh, profile test. Number one, you are not the sum of your results. If you test high as an Enneagram nine, you're not a nine. You are you. You might uh, you might relate to the profile of the Enneagram nine. You might say in the Enneagram realm, I most closely relate to the profile of an Enneagram nine. But you are you. You are not the sum of your test results. Uh, number two, when you take the Enneagram test, there are nine different types of personalities. Why the Enneagram? It's nine gram. It's a nine gram. So when you take that, it's probably going to give you your top three results. And one of the things I've noticed, I was actually just talking to an Enneagram coach recently about this. I've, I've noticed that uh, when you take that test and it gives you your top three, usually two of the top three, the numbers are side by side. I don't know if there's any significance to that. I just find it super interesting. And so you're going to get three numbers usually at the top. You're going to say these are the top three ranking numbers. And so here's what you need to be careful of. Don't look at the top ranking number. It might say, hey, you tested 86% as an Enneagram 9, but 78% as an Enneagram 7 and uh, 64% as an Enneagram 1, right? Again, 9 and 1 next to each other. Interesting. But Here's what you're not going to do. You're not going to look at that and go, oh, well, story over me of the journey of me and discovering who uh, I am on this Enneagram profile. I am an Enneagram nine, period. No, you may not be. You may have just tested as a nine that day. But here's what I will say. More than likely, you probably are one of the top three numbers that you tested as. And so your next step is going to be to really dive into the each number's core motivations, core desires, core fears, and the thing that the Enneagram calls a wounding childhood message, which I know sounds super dramatic, super traumatic, but it's really not. It's no, it's it's not that you were abused as a child. Maybe you were, but that's not what this is about. This is more about how you perceived the world around you when you were a child, fashions and forms who you become later in life. And that's what the Enneagram is pointing to in that moment. So you are not uh, necessarily uh, the top one on your score. You may not be any of the top three on your score. More than likely, you probably are. But I encourage you to dive into each number. Really ask yourself, not, not from a point of, I want to be this number. I'm out to be this number. But just really get honest with yourself. This whole self-discovery tool uh, or system is, 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 is about you being, being able to be honest with yourself. And if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't win in life without losing your mind. And so uh, test those out. T look at the top three. Um, I'm also going to put uh, a link in here to when I was on my friend Blake's podcast, the Ridgeline Leadership Podcast, where we talked further about the Enneagram if you want to hear more about this. But this is going to be our podcast throughout the summer, at least. Um, just me kind of diving into some of the things that I've learned uh, through the first 20 episodes as I have been uh, interviewing some amazing people. If you haven't caught any of those interviews, there are 20 episodes uh, out on the platform that you're watching or listening to this on where there's some amazing people where we talk about creativity, we talk about team culture, we talk about the Enneagram, tons of stuff about mental health and creativity. So I would highly encourage you to go back, listen to those, watch those, share those, share those with your friends. This is meant to be conversation starters, not the end of the conversation. I just want to start the conversation uh, and be a curator of these topics for you. I look forward to the rest of the summer. Cannot wait to be talking to you each week 
right here, the same spot, every Thursday release for the Winning in Life Without Losing Your Mind podcast. I'll talk to you then.